welcome back. There are a few more test and measurement tools that I'd like to tell you about, some of which are brand new to QSYS Designer version 4.0 and higher. Now, before we leave the signal injector and the signal probe behind, I want to show you one advanced trick for using these tools. First of all, it's a good idea to build a block like this in every one of your QSYS designs. That way you can always use the signal injector and signal probe to troubleshoot your design without taking it offline. However, I recommend incorporating a router in between your noise generators and the signal injector. A router is a very simple component, which simply lets you toggle which of its inputs is routed to each of its outputs. I'll change mine to have four inputs and one output, so that I can choose to have the injector use any of these noise generators or the output from the signal probe. So why would I do this? Well, I've just given myself the ability to create a soft patch anywhere I want in the design. Let's say it's one minute before showtime, for instance, and the band needs a monitor mix someplace that you hadn't prepared for. Well, all you have to do is attach the probe to your signal path, route it to the signal injector, and inject that audio wherever you need it. It's a handy trick to keep in your design, and you'll never know when you might need it. However, there are some places that a signal injector and a signal probe just can't attach to, such as a data port pin, or the connections between a data port amplifier and a loudspeaker. So how can you test the connection here? Well, if you click on your core over in the inventory in the left side pane, you'll see that there's a component called the loudspeaker monitor. Drag this into your schematic, and you'll see that it has one output audio pin, and nothing but a mute button and a gain fader in its control panel. So what kind of audio comes out of this component? Well, if you're using QSC data port amplifiers, then each one is represented in your design with its own status slash control components. Open up its control panel, and you'll see a section on the far right labeled monitor. This is associated with the core's loudspeaker monitor component. Simply activate the listen button, and the output of this amplifier will be sent to your loudspeaker monitor. You can only send one amplifier channel to the loudspeaker monitor at a time. So if you activate a new one, then it will turn off the previous one. Now that you have an audio pin of your amplifier signal, you could attach the signal probe to this pin. Or you could even wire the loudspeaker monitor to an output card that leads to an amplifier that goes to a loudspeaker here in your amp room. So that way, you can listen to the output of any loudspeaker in the entire design right from one place. Now, no matter how you use it, the loudspeaker monitor can only be accessed if you've dragged it into your schematic. So this is another component that we recommend always putting in the test and measurement section of every design. Now, there's one more component that you'll find just as useful as the loudspeaker monitor. That one's called the I.O. monitor. The I.O. monitor can be found in the test and measurement branch of your schematic library. It operates much the same as the loudspeaker monitor, with only one pin that you could wire to a nearby loudspeaker or to use a signal probe on. But if you double-click its control panel, you'll see that you can select any analog input or output in your entire design. Simply select the location of your desired device based on the names you've provided your inventory items, then select the name of the device, and finally specify which channel you want to listen to. Again, this can be any input or output channel, just as long as it's an analog connection. This is another wise addition to the troubleshooting section of every design you create. So the question is, are you actually going to build this for every single design? Sounds kind of like telling your dentist that you're really going to floss every day. He knows you're lying. Well, there's one more tool I want to show you to make this incredibly easy. If you're using QSYS Designer 4.0 or higher, there's an empty panel in the right side pane called the User Library. You can populate this panel with your own components or groups of components to make a library of specialized components that you use often. All you have to do is highlight all of these test and measurement tools, for instance, and drag them into the User Library. It will ask you to name it, so I'll name this one Test and Measurements. And now it lives as a single item in my User Library. I can drag it out and all my test and measurement components are there, already wired together. And guess what? This user library is global to your computer. So when you start a new design, your user library carries over. 
just drag it in and you're ready to go. Now there are certain components that are part of the core that might not be able to be duplicated, like the line out card that we used or the loudspeaker monitor, but I think you can see how valuable the user library can be for saving a group of components that you're going to use frequently. So now you've got the I.O. monitor, the loudspeaker monitor, and all your test and measurement components, and you say to me, hey Nate, that's great, and you're really cool, but this is only useful if I'm in the venue when there's a problem. Well, A, it is great. B, thank you. And C, watch this. If you go to the File menu and select Preferences, you'll see a tab that's called Hard Links. Here, you can manually input an IP address so that you can access your design remotely. As long as your QSYS system has access to an external network, you can connect to the core and manage all of these troubleshooting tools from anywhere in the world. So those are the test and measurement tools. Everything you need to monitor your signal and diagnose problems while the system is running from anywhere you want. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.